For our final product review from Tallman 3D, here we have their new printing material called Tech G. This material is not a PLA or ABS, but PETG, which stands for polyethylene terephthalate glycol. Why print with PETG material? Because it's claimed to have higher strength than ABS, minus the, the disadvantages that ABS has, such as uh, part warping and the, uh, the toxic fumes. It also has a glass transi transition temperature of 80 degrees uh, Celsius, which is much higher than PLA, which is typically 55 degrees Celsius. Taking a closer look at the filament, we can first of all see that the colour is uh, transparent or neutral. Uh, the texture of this filament, it's quite smooth. There is a very subtle roughness uh, to this filament, so printing with uh, Bowden type extruder setups won't have a problem at all. Uh, and also the strength of this filament, it's, it's quite stiff. I mean, looking, looking uh, at the way that this bends, it's just like, a, I guess, an ABS or PLA. But unlike a PLA, if we bend it too far, it won't simply snap. It'll be like, a, like an ABS where it'll uh, simply uh, stress the part to the point that it um, uh, maintains the, the bent shape. So uh, this finished product of uh, printing the Pion 230 quadcopter arm should have similar characteristics to an ABS part. And this Tech G filament comes in one kilogram spools. Uh, and looking at the inner hole diameter, it looks very similar to the other spools that I have, so my existing spool holder should fit. Are you kidding me? The inner diameter of the spool is about 51.9 millimeters. And the outer diameter of my spool holder is about 52.3 millimeters. Jeez. And here is the Pion 230 quadcopter arm successfully printed in Tech G material. Just like the Alloy 910 material from the previous video, the finished print quality of this part is exceptional. All the detail has, has come through and it looks like a really nice looking part. Uh, also, uh, as far as clear materials goes, this is the clearest material I think I've ever printed with. Um, this is printed at 100% so it's solid and yet you can still kind of uh, see see through that. So that's that's really interesting. So if you wanted to print a quadcopter frame in this material You could do some funky stuff with LEDs and you could have the LEDs facing into the material to light it up And here's just an example. This LED isn't very bright mind you, but you can see it's shining right through this part So at uh, at night time that would look quite specky, especially if you could have like a red green blue uh, LED kind of you know uh, strobing different colors Okay, uh, this printed uh, successfully at 245 degrees. Now I chose a high temperature of 245, which is the, the upper end of the printing range of this because I wanted the best bond, a layer bond that I could for the uh, stress test that I'll be putting this part through shortly. Um, but I have printed down at 230 degrees with this material and it has come out very well as well. So any uh, hot end out there should be able to print with this PET G without a problem. It also stuck to the uh, blue painter's tape on the heat bed uh, fine. Now, uh, when I did a practice test of this, I had the heat bed set to 60 degrees and it, w it came out perfectly flat. This particular one, I had the heat bed set at 45 degrees and halfway through the print, I did notice it did just very slightly start to want to bow. 
So halfway through when I did notice that, I actually upped the temperature to 60 and that stopped any extra uh, bowing. But um, even at 45, like that's still, you know, very flat. You, you're not gonna criticize anything there at all. Just if you do print a flat piece like this, up your print bed to 60, uh, 60 degrees Celsius and you won't have an issue at all. And I printed this at 245, which is, you know, the up, upper range of the printing temperature. And I was worried that I was going to encounter a lot of oozing with this material, but, there is no oozing that I can uh, that I can see. I have not cleaned this part up at all. There's no little blobs that have been deposited as the printhead was moving back and forth between these two supports of this arm, um, which I'm quite astonished actually, because um, I, I, like I said, I printed at 230 degrees and there was no oozing. So I just assumed at 245 there would be some oozing, but there's not. So this stuff uh, is really, really easy to print with. Uh, and lastly, there was no uh, odor. Uh, to speak of with this part. It was virtually odorless, um, but uh, just like any other filament, always recommend printing in a well-ventilated room. Time to test the strength of this part. Just like the previous videos, I'll uh, grab the peon like so, and uh, let's see if I can break it by hand. Doesn't want to bend much more than that. I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. Ugh. Whoa, that is very, very strong. Uh, if that was uh, an ABS type material, that would have started to bray by now. Uh, PLA, uh, PLA is quite stiff. I'm not sure if PLA would have broken yet, but it uh, would have been pretty darn close. So this is very, very stiff. However, you can see there's a little bit of flexibility there. So um, I think, uh, once again, in a crash, that tiny bit of flexibility that we see, that should hopefully absorb the majority of the impact and not totally destroy this part but um okay let's see if i can put more pressure on this and uh, see if i can break it by hand oh, nah i don't think i'm going to be able to break this particular part by hand but geez that's very very strong now i did print this at 100 percent infill i'm not sure if 50 percent is going to be as strong as this because it is still quite a it is it is like, like like an abs where it'll be weaker unlike the nylon which just is unbreakable but let's get the hand tools out and see if i can break it okay so i'll grab this part here with the pliers and i'll use the multi grips on this side get a nice clean grip on that and let's just keep bending until it breaks here we go Something's happening, I think. Oh, let go of that. Oh. Okay. Well, I bent it a lot, and it looks like I have started to, uh, you know, put put you know more pressure than this part can actually cope with, and it has maintained that shape. But it hasn't snapped. That hasn't broken. If that was PLA, that'd be all over by now for sure. If that was ABS, that would have uh, that the more it bent, the, the more it would have just snapped off. But this stuff seems to still. I'll see if I can bend that back, actually. Oh, I'm not going to be able to bend that back by hand. Oh, geez, that is still very, very strong, even though it's it's been it's been damaged or crooked in such a way. Let me let me try to repair that with uh, with the hand tools. Gee, I was not expecting this characteristic from this part. This is this is brilliant. Uh, let's see if I can. Bend this back, probably do it the same way. Is that straight? Oh, that's almost straight. Geez, does that mean in a really, really tough crash, this part won't break? Worst case, it may just simply bend and you'll have to use some hand tools to bend it back? Geez, that would be fantastic. Well, I didn't come all this way not to see it break, so let's keep bending this part until it does finally fail. Oh jeez, that is that I'm putting a lot of pressure on that and it's finally it's finally destroying this part. You can see uh, all the stress fractures down either side, but um that's that still hasn't snapped. It hasn't come away. Uh and in fact that still looks like a strong piece. There is still a lot of mechanical strength there. Oh hang on. Oh, I think I've bent it past the point of no return because it's starting to it's starting to bend by hand now more easily than uh, than what it did. Yep, I think that's cactus now. Okay. 
There we go. Finally broke it. Jeez, that took an absolute beating to do that. That is sensational. And for something totally different to print for this PETG material, here is the octopus from Thingiverse. This was printed at 0.1mm uh, layer height. I wanted to print um, something with this material uh, that would be used as a showpiece, as opposed to just something um, something like a stress mechanical part, like the quadcopter frame. And, and this piece has come out really, really nice. Now, I did print this at 230 degrees instead of the 245. And again, uh, you can see between his tentacle here and the main body, there is no uh, no oozing there, no stringiness. I did not have to clean up this part at all. Now, I printed this with a heat bed of 245, and just by the, the nature or the shape of this part, there was absolutely no problem at all with any warping. So if you are going to print something long and flat like uh, the, the, the quadcopter frame, then yeah, up the bed temperature to 60, but just something like this, 45 uh, you can easily print with and geez you might even be able to print without a heat bed uh, with the blue painters tape So just like a PLA or, or even an ABS this part at 0.1 millimeter has come out really really nice a nice smooth finish to it But one thing uh, that I was not expecting is with this clear material any blemishes past the the outer layer you'll be able to see because you can see right through to the second third fourth the infill everything so um, little things like where the layer change occurs, you can see just above his um, eyebrow here, there's these other marks. The, there's no texture to those, that's still perfectly flat, however that's where the layer change occurred. So you can see where the light's kind of bouncing off, it's creating extra shadows there. So that's something to be really aware of, I, I wasn't uh, actually expecting that. And uh, as I print this part hollow, I'll see if I can get that on the shot, um, even though it, there's, it's totally sealed up the top, once again, because it is clear, um, the inner layers didn't make the seal, only the outer ones did, so you can see where the inner layers kind of weren't, uh, weren't touching, so that was quite interesting to see as well. I honestly believe this PETG material to be quite disruptive for the 3D printer community, specifically when choosing a filament for any uh, mechanical stressed parts that you wish to print. Why print in ABS anymore when you can print in this PETG material which shares the same ease of printing as PLA, yet it is stronger than an ABS. I just don't see a reason why you would still want to print in ABS. Um, okay, granted ABS you can get uh, way more colours than what, what we can get here with PETG uh, and also ABS can withstand up to about 95 degrees uh, temperature but this can withstand you know north of 80 degrees C and there are uh, other manufacturers um, producing PETG in you know, various other colours so honestly, for, especially for the price points that, that we're asking or that they're asking for PETG I don't think I'll be printing in ABS ever again.